I don't mean to be unkind, but is there a thing with Republic people or good guys generally having only the trait of being good guys, but otherwise being incompetent? Like, that seems to be a recurring thing in the Clone Wars. I must help my people. I must do something to save my people. I'm never going to actually do anything, but I must do something to save my people. Yeah, okay, you talk a good game, but you're not actually doing anything, kid. Like, I'm trying to, to, route, to root for you here, but Jesus... So, of course, we can tell now where the story is going, because the Quarren's already, the Quarren leader's already been reasonable, and he's already been kind of, uh, when he's like, We will make them all slaves, even the women and the children. Oh, dead puppies. <laughs> I do kind of like Akbar again in this episode. He once again comes across as understanding. He at least understands the specific power of morale, and its usage in this situ situation and scenario, and is deliberately trying to make it so that the prince is being useful to their effort, rather than just putting the prince up on a pedestal and saying, you're the greatest uh, tongue. Now, uh, <clears throat> that being said, the Gungans? Now, I, I'm trying really hard not to make fun, because, see, what happens is they bring in the Gungans, and the Gungans start helping, and that's kind of awesome. You know, people who are already used to aquatic interaction and people who are nearby and they can ship over. Okay, that makes sense. And the Gungans already have a pre-existing uh, relationship with the Republic in general and with Amidala in specific. Notice Yoda immediately name drops uh, Amidala, actually, when he's like, here's what, here's what we need from you. I just kind of like that thing. We must be having times for thinking. And Jar Jar's like, no! And then he's like, you're right, the time for thinking is over. And I'm just like, they did that on purpose. But ignoring that, I like the idea of the Gungans. It makes sense. And in fact, I've always held the idea that most of the Gungans are fully competent, more than capable of actually doing stuff. Um, so why does their involvement basically come, come to nothing? Like, the, the cavalry shows up and then they lose. <laughs> um, I also love how Padme, who, again, I, I'd like to think is a competent person, says... Okay, you know, Anakin's like, I need to concentrate to bring this building down, so cover me. And then the very first thing Padme says is, rather than grabbing a gun and shooting people off his back, she turns and says, Anakin, hurry! It's like, it's, it's like three seconds between these two events happen. Um, Kit is still awesome. He's very awesome. I like the Whirlpool Generator. That makes sense. It's probably the first thing I've seen that really showcases that this is underwater combat rather than merely three-dimensional combat. Like, the idea of how much that would affect your ability to move and function is actually, it makes, actually makes tons of sense. It would be a great uh, uh, inv uh, area denial kind of a thing in underwater combat. In fact, I'm a little surprised that we didn't see any more of that. That's all I've really got. I do have to say it's kind of pathetic like, I mentioned earlier that the Mon Calamari are the generally more peaceful ones, so it makes a degree of sense that they don't really have a standing army or anything like that. But um, the whole point was that their relationship with the Republic is what allowed them to withstand this. And their relationship with the Republic brought in the Gungans, who failed immediately, and three Jedi, who have not really succeeded at a lot of stuff. So what in God's name are these people up to? Anyways, <laughs> moving on, we'll conclude next time with more underwater stuff. See you around.